just mic'd up with Mikey Matuk. Got the boys in. I got Lloyd. We got J Mitch. We got Jackie Boy. He tried to jump up, and he might have knocked it in. Good timing. Let's go. What a start to the Monday. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I'm from Lafayette. My boys are coming in. Say, oh, 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 God. So I'm, me and Joel, girl, I got Joel in the headlock. And he's sitting there, he's punching me in the stomach, like, hey, punch me, punch me, punch me. Here, if there's everyone sitting around, who here thinks Ochenko can practice today after having five full beers? And he goes, Chad Jones, right? Chad's doing the team. <laughs> Six <laughs> minutes. For seven minutes, right? Chad's like, no, man, I, I don't think Ochenko can practice today. And I was like, I look back, I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you there. You were more fucked up than me. The only spirit plane had some issues i think she was sleep sleep farting you heard her or you just thought it was her i, I sat right next to her as well whoa what was that time for the show <laughs> <laughs> Mic'd up with Mikey Matuk. Got the boys in. I got Lloyd. We got J Mitch. We got Jackie Boy. He tried to jump up and he might have knocked it in. Good timing. Let's go. What a start to the Monday. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I'm from Lafayette. My boys are coming in. Say, oh, 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 God. So I'm, me and Joel, girl, I got Joel in the headlock. And he's sitting there, he's punching me in the stomach, like, hey, punch me, punch me, punch me. Here, if there's everyone sitting around, who here thinks Ochenko can practice today after having five full beers? And he goes, Chad Jones, right? Chad's doing the team. <laughs> Six <laughs> minutes. For seven minutes, right? Chad's like, no, man, I, I don't think Ochenko can practice today. And I was like, I look back, I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I saw you there. You were more fucked up than me. The only spirit plane had some issues i think she was sleep sleep farting you heard her or you just thought it was her i, I sat right next to her as well whoa what was that time for the show <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to bring your chinchilla and your turtle? <laughs> what did that tell you about? <laughs> <laughs> As you see, it's God, they hate fat people. <laughs> I mean, I get crushed for that. You know what I mean? It's like, come on, man. Hey, you know, like, just the South, bro, you got a bunch of food down here. Like, they, they should stay here. Look at Lloyd. Lloyd. <laughs> You know what, Lloyd? <laughs> You're looking for a recruiting coordinator, Coach. I'm here. <laughs> He's like, I'll piss my pants right now. No way. No way. <laughs> He's wearing gray pants, long gray pants. He goes, I'll piss my pants right now.
Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Miked Up. Today is Friday, March 5th. We got a big show for you today. LSU baseball fans uh, everywhere are excited. Uh, probably more excited than they have been over the last four games because LSU is in the winning column again, right? They beat Vanderbilt last night in game one of a three-game series. Vanderbilt, top 10 team in the country. Uh, LSU has uh, coming off a four-game losing streak. They face Vanderbilt at home. And they do what they need to do, start off the game, um, and probably the best way they could start it off, got off hot um, with the bats, scored a bunch of runs, put the pitchers in a situation where um, they have a little bit more room for error. We're going to get into all that conversation. They showed us a lot. There's still a lot of things that we would like to see them do a little bit better. But some of the issues that have reared its head for majority of the year, some of the issues that people have been talking about, they were a lot better at yesterday. We're going to get into that. We're going to have a conversation about that. Uh, game two is tonight at 7 p.m. on SEC Network. Last night was on ESPN2. Our guy, KP, and uh, Dave Neal were calling the game. Apparently, they saw me and you, Jay, at um, the Lod Cook. Apparently, they announced it. They said, oh, yeah, we saw Jared and Mikey at Lod Cook, which I didn't see them. I didn't talk, we didn't where were they hiding at? I guess they're staying there. Um, we're gonna have to have a conversation. About yeah, that. we would like that. Maybe in the booth. Maybe call us up in the booth. Yeah, Let's have a yeah. conversation up on air. <laughs> um, game two tonight, SEC Network. Uh, big game. We talked about yesterday being a big game. Now today's a big game. One game at a time. That's how it works. Um, Haley Van Lith, big recruit. I mean, a big transfer last year coming into LSU is now our native name is back in the portal. No longer gonna be at LSU. Gonna find a home elsewhere. Do not know why. Uh, she is making the move. Don't know if it was her decision, if the coaches said, hey, maybe this is a mutually way part mutually part ways, or um, if she just came here and realized, oh, this is, I don't really feel comfortable here. I don't know the issue, but she is moving and going on to a different school. She has another year of eligibility, I guess, because of COVID. And so we shall see where she goes. Best of luck to her. And I'm staying in the basketball news, men's college basketball. Everybody's kind of, I mean, I'm excited about what they did this year and how the improvements they've made under Matt McMahon in year three. They uh, have a pretty good recruiting class coming in. They have two guys they have already had uh, signed that are coming, and they just got another one in four-star guard, Victorious Miller. And if you don't know who Victorious Miller is, and if you don't... Skinny is who is. And if you're not real uh, familiar with the rap game here in Louisiana, uh, there's a rapper in Louisiana, and his name was Master P. What's the P stand for? And he is... Well, you tell me. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, his name is Master P. His son, Lil Romeo. Uh, Good bat. Na 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 na. Make him say. Lil Romeo, good basketball player. Watched him actually play in a tournament when I was in eighth grade. We were the same age, and uh, their team was really good. Well, Master P's bought it. Brother, I believe, our brother-in-law, somebody related to Master P. His name is Silk the Shocker. He's got some bangers, too, if you've never heard of Silk the Shocker. I'd go look him up. Some bangers, some great songs. Well, his son is named Victorious Miller. So, actually, by using my brain, Silk the Shocker and Master P have to be either cousins or brothers because of the last name Miller. So, uh, Victorious was, Miller is not someone I was laughing to start. Yeah, like, I was like, I, I, I got there. I got there. It took me a little bit. I got there. Listen. It's been a long day. A lot it's of only, it's only 1 o'clock. A lot of been seltzers in there. A lot of seltzers. I got a lot of energy. Bro. Zoom in. Yeah. I got coffee. I got a Celsius in there. I got a lot of things happening. Well, going through the veins. Oh, I'm going to say, wait. Going wait, through wait, the veins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but Soak the Shocker's son, Victoria Miller, who's a very big recruit, top 50 or top 60 recruit in the country, six foot five guard, is in the, now the 2024 recruiting class. That's a big pickup. Um, I imagine you're going to start seeing some, hearing some things in the basketball world as far as transfers go and whatnot. So uh, congratulations to McMahon and LSU for getting bringing that guy in. Uh, it seems like they're starting to bring in some talent, real talent, and it looks like they are on the, on the way up. Um, Arkansas is looking for their uh. new basketball coach. And uh, Beard, Chris Beard, who left from Texas to Ole Miss, is a headliner, a name that he was supposed to go. He said he is staying at Ole Miss. Um, Will Wade says he is not leaving McNeese. Uh, so we'll, we shall see if that is, that is true. They are still looking. Musselman officially said he is going to USC, and which in turn 
uh, said, Bronny James said, I don't want to be here anymore. So I'm going to declare for the NBA draft, which I don't think that's a shock to anybody. But you also, um, in basketball, you don't have to go. So you can kind of test right. the waters. Yeah, so he declared keeping his college eligibility, but he also put his name in the portal. portal. So he's going to go in there. I think he's weighing all the options. Yeah, he's going to do his thing. LeBron's probably going to say, okay, what teams are going to look at you? What teams do I want to go play for? What teams are going to maybe draft him so they can get me to go play? And maybe they say, okay, hey, let's do this one more year, and then let's go back out in the draft yeah. after your sophomore year. Uh, so, Bronny James, maybe Bronny James comes to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I don't think that's a, that's a possibility. There was a time. There was a time where he posted something about LSU. He was in an LSU shirt. Yeah, I know. That's the old days. That must be his only shirt because I ain't seen. Oh, nice. everybody knows what he's doing, right? Yeah, he's gonna course. go to the draft. Lakers have a late pick. Of course, of course. Or he's gonna go to the draft. He's gonna do all the workouts. He's gonna do the things he needs to do, and he's gonna come back for a sophomore year and do it all again next year. I think he's gonna go to the draft. You think he's gonna get drafted? You think he's gonna and go the draft? Lakers gonna take him? Okay, maybe. Why would not? Maybe. You can't we'll get in trouble for taking a we'll see. late Staying first on, rounder. You're right. Well, you can, but uh, you don't have that many picks in the NBA draft. So I mean, you don't want to just give a, a hey here's just throwing pick as a late first rounder. Like you kind of want that one to be a. You see this hat? This is LeBron's GM hat. He's putting it on. Okay. Okay, LeBron. I don't think his hat has tigers on it. Okay, LeBron. I don't know if LeBron's a rope hat guy either. Big wine guy. I love wine. The, him and him and uh, JJ, big wine guys, they are great. at their, That podcast is awesome. That is awesome. Um, Salt and pepper is here. Last conversation on the basketball world before we get to baseball. The Pelicans, who were playing really good basketball, they were the four seed. Now they have fallen down to the seven seed. I know it doesn't really matter, but you're going to want it to matter because playoff basketball in the blender is really fun. And I uh, found out last night that, that my sister's company has four tickets. Oh, wow. Uh-oh. So I uh, put my, my request in for some playoff games. Oh, Mike, you should up around playoff time. Like, said, well, my go. sisters will go. So like, it's a boy, me, Mike, who's my brother-in-law, and then my nephew, Hudson, who they're at the game last night. It's a boys trip. You know, boys night at the basketball game in the Blender in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Allie and Catherine can go have dinner, you know, do a girls night. <laughs> the whole deal. Um, but they got to fight for the way. They don't want to play in the playoff tournament or play in tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, so we shall see what happens. There's only eight games left in the season, in the NBA season, before playoffs start. Uh, so we will keep an eye on that and give you the highlights of, of uh, what ha- what's happening with the Pelicans right now. But the reason why everybody is here and the reason why everybody wants to have listen to us talk about nonsense and talk about sports is because uh, LSU baseball. And last night was the first step and I, want, I don't even want to call it a new season, but the first step for this team to get to the point where they expect to be. And a lot of things went right. There are some things, obviously, that weren't perfect, but better than they have been in the past. Um, Holman got off to a great start. He was perfect through four and a third. And then he gave up a couple hits, and he gave up. It felt like it was a windblown homer. It looked, like it, that that ball got out, it looked like it was a fly ball. Yeah. And I kept watching Pearson. I kept watching Pearson. I'm like, this ball's going to go to the fence. His face was, uh, Holman's face was confused too. Yeah. When they, when they panned to him after, he was like, and look, he hit it well, but hit straight in the end. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, there's no way. Goes out, the, uh, ends up, LSU gets out to a 9 0 lead, right? And I'm going to get back to that. Too high. Too high. What do you mean too high? What do you mean too high? What do you mean too high? So LSU gets out to an iron lead. I'll go backwards in a little bit to get, tell you how that happened and what I liked about them getting to that lead and how they got to that lead. Uh, but 9-0, Holman's perfect through four and a third, gives up a hit, gives up four runs, makes it 9-4, right? How did you get to nine? We talked on Wednesday and on Monday about how baseball is such a game of momentum and game of inches and – breaks and it's felt feels it's felt like up to this point that every break every 50 50 ball every you know moment that could go one way or the other would always go away from the tigers right close games they weren't winning you know maybe they had a big lead then maybe they had a close play at you know uh at first that didn't they the challenge didn't work whatever the issue is or whatever the break is it has not been breaking the way lsu would hope well both pitchers started started the game off hot. I think it was the third. I think the, they were hitless through three. Then Pearson hits a homer. Right? Boom. One run. Felt good. Guy threw him an 88-mile-hour slider, which the starter last night throws 100. 
which is that's impressive. Uh, which is uh, shadows. Don't know why you just don't throw the heater, but he threw the slider. Thank you, Homer. Right, great swing by Pearson. Home run gets the gets the boys rolling. Next guy gets on base. Then you got Bingham, and Bingham big ham hits a hard chopper to second. Right, no, there's runners on first and second. Take that back. Bingham hits a hard chopper. Kling walks. 0-2, goes 0-2 to full count, or, and then ends up walking. So he's on first base. Uh, I, mean, I forget who gets on after him. But then you have Bingham up to the plate, and Bingham hits a hard chopper to second base. Taylor made, no doubt about it, don't care how fast you are, 4-6-3 double play, no doubt. Right? Not because it was a bad swing, not because it was a big play, just because of baseball. Well, second baseman feels it, and... Throws decides, it to left field. Decides to throw a souvenir. Right, which is awesome. Felt like he didn't really have it in his hand well and just alligator armed it. Choked it a bit. Left field. Kling, who can run, runs around, scores. So now that's 2 nothing, and there's the break that LSU has not hadn't gotten to this point in the season. So it goes to be 2 nothing, and then all of a sudden, oh, LSU can't hit with runners in scoring position. All of a sudden, base it runners in scoring position. Base it with runner scoring position. Base it with runner. That's how they got to nine runs. The whole point in saying that is because when we talked on Wednesday and on Monday, it only takes one time to have one of those breaks go your way before everybody says, okay, we're not cursed. This is okay. It's going to turn our way. And then what has been a big issue? Hit runners in scoring position. You also you get an opportunity, you score some runs, you hear the crowd cheer, you get a break that probably shouldn't have happened, but happened. Now all of a sudden, three straight at bats, runners in score position, base hit, base hit, base hit. Right? You grow the lead to nine nothing, um, and then then this one's some of the stuff that I you want to see continue to get better happen. You go up the four spot, right? And then the next inning. Pitcher just gave up an inning. He's doing well. Two outs. About to get out the inning to get you back in there so you can give him some some insurance runs. Ground ball. Field it. Second base. Um, the main part of that is fielding it. And so the ground ball went through the wickets. Five hole. Yep. Error. Leads to two more runs. Takes your start out the game. No. He pitched, finished the inning, but eventually, eventually, no, he doesn't finish the inning. He didn't. He doesn't finish. Right at Griffin Herring, who gave That's up. That's right. So your starter gets out of the game. He would have gone six, and then been taken out. And then been taken out. Only four runs, right? And I'll, I can give the give up the four because one this is one one swing of the bat, right? Um, and then so he does not finish the six. The Griffin Herring comes in, has been lights out, which we're going to get to later on in the show because his numbers I don't think are going to surprise some people. Over the last week or the last seven appearances. He comes in, um, cashes in a couple runs that were unearned because of the error at short, and then proceeds to shut him down, shut him down, shut him down. LSU puts on a run, wins 10 6. So, a lot of really good there. Also, a lot of things that they still want, you still want to see them progress at. Um, but all in all, I was very excited about the game. I was very happy they needed the win. It was a big win. Uh, and they move on to today. What did you like about the game? What do you want to see them get better at? And. Did you see some of the things that were concerning be less concerning? Uh, what I liked about the game, you won. You found a way to win. What I need to see to keep them get see them continue to get better at is to continue to build the blocks and put the blocks and stack wins and stack things on top of each other. Yeah, there's a lot they can be better at. The most important thing for them, by far, was to get back in the winner's column. And it didn't really matter how it happened, but they needed to get back in the winner's column. They needed to find a way to feel good about themselves again. Right. So you did that. But how did you do it? Right. You went out there. You were able to get timely hits when you needed them early on, because guess what? You only won. It was 10 six at the end of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Those extra three. Right. After you put up that six, they matter. Right. You started getting hits and people sit here and say like, oh, man, but you're up nine nothing. You almost let them come back. Who cares? Yep. Because guess what? A week and a half ago, how this whole conference slate started is you were finding ways to lose those. Yep. You were finding ways to go up for nothing and still give it up by the fifth or sixth, all right? So you found your way back in the win column. You started building on things that you had not been doing well early on in this conference schedule. And then now you gotta continue to keep building. 
Continue to keep striving to play a full 27 outs. Continue to keep executing better on the mound. Continue to keep executing better when there's runners in score position. And that's when you start snowballing this thing. You start feeling real good about yourself and you start stacking series together. Then maybe you stack a sweep together. Then maybe you stack a week of not losing together. And that's how you start building momentum. You start building a team that's going to start feeling good about themselves and that's going to start looking to peak at the right time of the year. So Holman went five and two thirds, gave only four hits, right? Struck out 10, looked really good. Part of the stuff that, part of the, the issues were, hey, pitching staff is walking too many guys. They're not attacking these hitters. They are giving them too many free passes, putting too much pressure on the starter and on the defense and not, uh, and taking a momentum away from the offense. Big issue. Other big issue is offense not being able to, one, get on base and cause some issues. You know, cause some havoc around the bases, put some pressure on their pitching staff. That was one of the offensive issues. The other one was, hey, when you do get the guys on base, nobody's getting any hits and driving these guys in, right? So those are the two main things. Both of those things yesterday, great, right? Holman threw great. Griffin Herring came in behind him, and he threw really great. And offensively, they, they drove guys in, runners in scoring position. Not all of them were homers. You know, obviously, Bingham hit the solo homer. Uh, was there another homer? Pearson. Pearson, solo homer. So that's two runs out of the nine. The other seven, guys on base. You can tell they're, look, Milam laid down a really good bunt. He was trying to do his job, ended up being a really good bunt for a base hit. Um, Paxton Kling, ringing double in the left center field gap, which I like to Looked see. Good. You, you want to see it up the middle. You got to walk out of him. 0-2 to full count. 0-2 to, to, to walk. 0-2 to full count. You got to walk. Obviously, the second at bat wasn't great, but then you finish it with a double. With a, a huge double. double. With a double, right? And so... You know, you see, you, you could see when he hit a double with a smile and he fell, I'm like, okay, I feel a lot watching better. watching him run the bases, no too, doubt. looks like, no doubt. oh, that's the guy, no that's doubt. the guy. No doubt. That was huge yeah. to see that happen, right? Every starter in the lineup got on base. Eight of the nine got a hit, Yeah. right? Great to see. Yeah. Bullpen comes out. You only threw one guy. So all of those big, big issues looked really good yesterday. Now, let's dig a little bit deeper into what – we want to see better. Okay. 9 nothing, giving up six runs, not scoring again until the eighth. I'd like to see them continue to try to put pressure. That happens in baseball sometimes. You just kind of get into things. Not that big of an issue. But within those nine runs, when you get an opportunity to, to end an inning and shut down a rally after they have scored four runs and you didn't score run, any, another run that next inning to get them a zero, you got to make the plays defensively. The easy plays and the plays you're supposed to make, you've got to make it. Right? And Jay – obviously understands that and jay is trying to make his guys understand that because if you tried. watch i think he, I think he got it across <laughs> if you watched monday's game mylon was playing shortstop we hadn't seen him at shortstop all year now jay brings him in a little bit and guy hits a ball 100 miles an hour plus off the bat and mylon misses it run scores you know kind of puts them in this situation where it only looks like they're not gonna be able to come back Jay goes and gets Thatcher, but instead of talking to Thatcher, he's going right at Milam and basically kind of getting in him a little bit. Like, hey, you've got to fucking make that play, basically, is what he's saying. Okay? Which happens. Everybody makes errors. Happens. So that happened on Monday. Well, yesterday. Same kind of situation. Not as big of a moment because you're not chasing. They're chasing you, but could have been detrimental. That put the game in a position where... And ball probably not hit as hard. As hard. Either. And you're playing in normal depth. Yeah. And you don't have to turn two. You just get one out. Mm-hmm. Same thing happened. Got to make a point. Goes to the mound to take out his starter, who should have gotten through six, but takes him out. Instead of talking to his starter, he looks like he's talking right at Braswell. Letting him hear it. Got to make that play. I'd imagine he is saying, you know, and so. In a very nice way. In a very yeah, polite way. Yes, of you course, know? of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, for me, those big, those close plays and, like, those 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 plays that you're supposed to make that you don't make, you got to see them continue to make them. Start making them. Yeah. Right? Because you don't want to give a team like Vandy, who's a top 10 team, an opportunity to feel like, oh, we got some life. It was 9 nothing. now it was 9-4, now it's 9-6. 9 nothing. 9-4, okay, one thing. Then you go back out there, they don't get any more runs. You feel like, okay, now we've kind of quashed this momentum, but you give them more momentum with an error that should have been made. Yeah. Not a hard play in the hole, not a play where you're running and you have to make this crazy throw. Play that you need to be made, Basil Tate needs to be made, and Jay obviously knows it should be made because of the way he reacted. That needs to be better. Right, so those are the two things um, that I would like to see 
be more consistent. Yeah. But great step yeah. in the right direction. Well, what I did love about last night, and obviously you brought it back to even the Monday night game against Southern, is it almost seems like when you have a when you come off a year like you just had, and then you get into the next year, you have a good group of guys who understand what it takes to go there, right? But then you also have an influx of guys who were not a part of that. And so you kind of probably go through some coaching. Maybe there's a little lesser intensity, kind of, if you will. I, I, I don't love to say intensity just because of the thought, like, I'm sure Jay's still intense and he does what he does, right? So, like, there, there goes a part where I think you go through a year and you go through some time where you're doing some things and you get so far into it that you almost kind of lose the ability to be able to jump someone's ass a little bit. And it seemed like the the tipping point had kind of gotten to a spot where he's like, yeah, it's about time I start getting on some people again. And so you saw it Monday night with the Milam situation. You saw it last night with the Braswell situation. And it's almost that, that feeling of, uh, I am now pointing out these spots where I need you guys to rise to the occasion and I'm letting you know as soon as it happens. Right. I'm not going to talk to you after the game. I'm not going to wait. Even if you saw there was late in the game where there was runners on. And I think we had a popped up bunt by maybe we had a pinch hit. That's what happened. There was a lefty on the mound. We pinch hit for Pearson. We brought in Fry. Fry, Fry goes and pops up a bunt against a lefty. And Jay almost lost his mind and looked at the next hitter like, don't look at me. Swing the bat. Right. When we put you into those situations, we're not putting you in a bunt. We need you to swing the bat right there, right? Like, we didn't we didn't take a lefty-lefty matchup out to put you in to bunt, and it's not even safety squeezing a run in. We want you to swing the bat. And it's almost like he's letting these guys know these are the moments that you can't let fleet and go away. These are the moments that I need you to show up for. And now they're starting to get that attention to it, and it's, it is super paramount to me on how they come out tonight, what kind of energy shows up tonight? What kind of statement they make from the start tonight? Because you are facing their guy tonight. Right. And this is a huge opportunity for you to get the first series win in conference play this year. It's a huge opportunity to spring you forward in this thing. But it doesn't happen if you don't show up the way you need to show up tonight. And I think Jay is, like I said, starting to take those little micro moments during the game and putting real, real, real spotlights on them by how you perform if you're not doing what you need to do. Ooh, uh, I believe it's called how to win awareness. How to win awareness right and so you talk about all the little things all the things that he is making sure you understand like it matters that's it this is what we need right? you for yesterday's game we talked about it being very big mm -hmm. and he knows it that's why he's that's why he's doing what you're saying because he understands hey we can't win the series unless we win the first game or win our a first game. game a game you got to win a game to win a series right you're losing four straight you feel you can feel the pressure just sitting on top of the team. It's like, man, y'all lost three in a row to Arkansas. You got run ruled twice on Sundays against two teams that you don't feel like you should have gotten ten run ruled. You should have won a game extra on, innings the day before. Should have won. Yep, the game. So it's like, man, what's going on with this team? It doesn't feel like they have a lot of the magic. Feel a lot of that pressure. So to to release that, you have got to win a game. And you got to win a game against a team like Vanderbilt. So, last night, they did what they needed to do to win. Now, fast forward to game two, which is tonight. Vanderbilt started last night, although he did throw very hard, and he had some good stuff, and he's probably going to be a very good pitcher. He is not their ace. He has now just recently moved into their number three role. I think that was his third start of the year. There was 100. LSU did a really good job with him. But he's their number three. You now have to go through their ace three and A their three B too. Honestly, yeah, right, yeah. So like All you have right, two threes, it, yeah, right. So now you have to go through their ace today against your number two, and then you have to go through their number two against somebody. Don't know who that third pitcher is going to be for us, but still got a long road because now that you've won one. You feel like winning this series is definitely possible. Like the law, you just want to win one at the, at the beginning of this. Now you have a chance to really do some things and really make some some noise. And so, everything they did last night, they have to do, but do it better. Yeah. Because you had the 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 competition on the mound is going to be increased. This guy's their number one. Runs are going to be at a premium, um, especially early on. So you cannot 
afford to get complacent and give them extra opportunities. All right. So tonight's now the most important game of the season. Hey, I look at I look at this too. I think something like this is important when I when I think about this team. So you watch Griffin Heron. He's a very very talented lefty, right? He, he'll sit ninety three to ninety five. He's got a wipeout slider. But let's all call a spade a spade here. He didn't start the year as their number one reliever. He didn't start right. the year as their marquee guy out of the pen. So what does that mean? There has to be guys in that clubhouse that if for for I don't care how you want to call it, it has to have seen themselves in a brighter light, if you will. So when you watch Griffin go out and dominate the way he's dominated over his past what eight outings, Seven every years. especially everyone he's he's had uh in the in the conference right now, there has to be something in you that sparks yourself to say, Hey, it's it's time for me to turn it on, right? Because I know I can do what he's doing. I know I could be that guy too. It's time for me to turn it on and match what he's bringing so that way our team just starts to <laughs> with a little healing. We start exactly. getting going right now. Exactly. And I think tonight, this, this is a huge night tonight. It's a huge night for the rest of that staff because Griffin is unavailable tonight. <laughs> like yeah. He ain't going to throw he's done, for the, he's done for the weekend. He's done for, he's done for the weekend. So it's time for the rest of that, that staff to show up and start matching what he's done. But it's also time for that offense – to repeat, to show last night wasn't a fluke, to once again step up against a very, very quality arm. You out-energize them, you out-execute them, and you beat them at the end of the game because this is how you start to get going. And let's talk offensively just for a second because what did they do differently to help them get off to that start? Do I think they're going to score nine runs in two innings every game? No, you can't expect that, right? They may score five runs all game. But it, it, it's going to be five big runs, and your pitching staff has got to do a good job of keeping them who doesn't score, who they don't score a bunch of runs. you got to keep them at bay. Now, offensively, well, man, completely different than they've been over the last four games. They came out aggressive. Like normally, offensive offenses under Jay Johnson, which they have been very successful, and there's no slight to anything. This is the way he goes about it. They're a little more patient. They, you know, they wait for the right opportunity. They're not just free swingers and chasing. Well, up to this point, that hasn't been super successful with this guy, with these guys they have on their team. They don't have as much experience, so it's a little bit, yeah. you know, maybe they, they feel a little, they don't like hitting with two strikes. They don't like hitting, you know, in counts. They don't feel like they have control, and who knows? But for some reason, it wasn't, didn't feel like it was happening. Now, they may have said nothing internally about any of this, but what I saw was, the team offensively was way more aggressive. They were attacking early in counts. They were not just waiting for something to come to them. They almost felt like they were forcing the pitcher out of the zone as opposed to forcing him in the zone, right? And so, to me, that's the style of offense that I would probably want to see a little bit moving forward just because you saw the success. I mean, before they even scored the runs, Bear Jones almost went oppo taco off their starter, right? Great swing, just missed it. The guy catches it at the track. And so I enjoyed the aggressive approach. And I think, you know, as long as they're not swinging at everything out of the zone, I think that's the approach you need to move, have moving forward until everybody starts to kind of feel like, all right, we all feel our swing, we feel good about where we're at, and go back to whatever approach you feel like they need to go to. Um, did you see the same thing? Yeah, I did. And I, I, I'm going to bring this name up because I think it's been very, very, very sneaky, especially when I look at this right now. But you don't realize it. But can anybody tell me who's tied for home, for second on the team in homers? Who's almost got double-digit homers on the year already? Bingham. Bingham. Salty know. vet right now showing up for the squad. He's got about – almost got an 1,000-plus OPS right now. He's tied for the second, second on the team with homers right now. He's turning into that next bat that we talked about – on the squad that needs to start showing up as a presence, that needs to start being feared in a lineup, that needs to, that people need to feel like, let's be a little careful here. Yeah. He's, he's one that can hurt us right now, all right? And so it, once you can get these guys to start showing up like that, then this thing really starts to churn and really starts to go. No doubt. And he, um, like la the homer last night was a laser beam yeah. off the bottom of the scoreboard. Probably um, 97, 98 up yeah. in the zone. And uh, he knew it. I like the way he walked out the box, looked good, felt confident. You saw a dugout kind of, you know, bring in some energy. Sometimes you have to, what do we say on the show, bring your personality. Sometimes you don't feel like bringing it, but you got to fake it early on. And once you fake it and you start doing it and things start to happen, everybody starts to kind of pile on top of that. And so, yeah, I think Bingham's been a key. Um, you know, I like to see um, 
Bear Jones started off 0 for 3. Right? I don't think he... he I, I just remember the ball that he hit up the middle. That almost was, the ball was hit about 6,000 miles an hour. Yeah, so he had both ex- both top exit viewers of the game for the shoot. One 13-point-something and one 12-point-something. Weird. Right? One of them almost took decapitated the umpire at yeah. second. Yeah. And uh, But I like the way he started out slow and finished strong. Right? Swing up the middle that went 113 miles an hour and almost killed the umpire. Unbelievable swing. Um, Travinsky came through with a two-out... I mean, a two-RBI single... You had the big guys showing up when they needed to. Your top players became your top players, and then you had some other guys start to feel a little bit better, right? Milam got the bunt single. That does not wonders. You don't understand how big that is for a hitter, especially a young hitter, to say, damn, I'm going to throw a bunt down, and I'm going to get a base hit. Like, that's a, he stole that hit. And, like, damn, that feels good. I finally got something to go that way. Now, you know, maybe he gets hot. I like the aggressive nature of the team last night. Um, and I like the fact that the pitching staff didn't walk anybody. Well, you were there, which he didn't tell. Did you know how Lloyd was there at the game? I sure didn't. Wow. By the way, this look at Lloyd's new headphones. We listen, yes, the listen. chat came through. Chat, chat uh, bullied me Mikey into to not even buying them, to checking to see where his yeah, because I already bought them. Yes. And you know what? I for, completely forgot I did. That's right, because you don't have to wear them. I was over here looking like Mothman prophecies with it, these things. Bill's character. The, Bill's character. It did. You know. Now I. I don't know if you need any more character actually. No. Yeah. Got plenty. Yeah, you got, got plenty. plenty. Well, you were at the game, which I'm glad you told us now that you were there. because I cool that, thought. Yep, he thought. That he Mike, I thought. That, you know that um, just scared the bejesus out of me. I just saw it in the corner of my eye. Um, I thought you were typical up in the at the big wigs section. You know, you'd be proud of me. I turned around. I've seen you up there a time or two before. Yeah. What'd I turned him down. Me? Security's a little tight. You'd be, you'd be, <laughs> you'd be surprised. I turned the tickets down. Did not go. Yeah, you're um, like the. Uh, that's never stopped you before from asking me, hey, where are y'all at? I'm oh, on top. do you want to take this back to text messaging? Because that would be interesting. Because I have a I text, got a phone. God I have a text it. message here. Yeah, I knew you weren't going to do that. Uh, <laughs> he was there. I was there. What are you talking about? Right next to me. No, you weren't. Yes, yes I was. he was. Oh, why didn't y'all invite me? We didn't know you were at the game. Well, yeah, he didn't invite me to come to the game. I didn't invite him to come to the game. All right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, you were at the game. You don't have to prove it to me yet. I'm not going to throw the fl- – you don't have to throw the challenge flag like the commercial. You were at the game. What did you see? What did you like? Because you had some extra insight because you're back in your your usual spot where you yes, felt got comfortable last yes. year Ooh, next uh, to uh, – The Berkeley's. coaches. Yeah, the coach's daughter. There's, there's a lot of uh, insight that comes from sitting next to that seat. You don't even have to be there, but you can just feel the aura of the Bertman seat, which we leave empty when he's not there. But I did see a lot of what you – kind of like outlined i think you kind of hit it on the head where there was to me it's you saw the new version of lsu baseball that you wanted that jay is kind of trying to pull out of this baseball team where and jared hit this uh also like right on the head where he's highlighting points in the game that i don't think he thought he would have to highlight like hey these are the points in the game that you need to be 110 percent focused on like this is a big play i don't know if you realize it or not and i think he's starting to coach the team a little bit differently which is a sign of a good coach to where you're like all right, I've tried to be cool, Jay. Like, with the guys, we've won a national championship. Y'all know how to do this business. Like, same thing as last year, right, Phil? It's like, okay, cool. Start off good, get to coverage play. It's like, oh, this is not what I like. Not what I intended. Tries to show the team, like, this is the emotion I want from me by kicking out of a baseball game. Gets ejected, first time we've ever seen it. That didn't work. So now it's turned into, all right, you little shits. Here's how I'm going to coach you. Every little thing that I think that you don't, aren't paying attention to, I'm going to prove to you that's important. Like the Brazil air, he goes out there, not to, talk to, not to talk to the pitcher. He called the entire infield in and said, looks at one guy directly the entire time and talks to him. Like, and Jay's starting to tip his pitches. <laughs> when you know Jay's mad, he's got a serious power walk. And if you know he's not, he's, he's not going to do it to the pitcher. But I saw he did the same power walk that he did. To Milam? To Milam, and I'm like, oh, he's going he's gonna to rip. Braswell. And Short King straight energy. Out. We so, can't you know, get long strides, so we stomp the ground. And, like, he was – you could tell. Now he's mad at a pitcher. It's different because it's not, you know, whatever. But plays you should make. He goes, anyway. I mean, and understand – not to cut you off, too. Understand, well, like, he could have waited until that inning was over, even though he 1, was changing pitchers percent. right there, to do that. No, 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 no. You're going to get this right now because I need the urgency now. And that's what he – they talked about that post game with uh, – who's our God? Who's God? The voice of the Tigers. That um, – Bill, Bill, Bill Franken was, was uh, interviewing in post game, and he was like talked about that specific moment where he was like, 
you know, the mound. He's like, I don't want to have to go out to the mound. He goes, in that specific instance, there was a, a world where I wouldn't have had to go out there. It right. would have been, you get Holman out the game. He gets out the game. You go at Griffin Herring comes in. You don't even have to see me. He goes, but there was a point in the game that I felt like I had to go out there, and it wasn't for Holman. And so that's the type of thing that he's doing now, which I think the team is starting to realize, like, there's an extra emphasis on playing winning baseball. And that's what, hopefully, it's not just a, a it's one, not. one type deal, because I think you saw the other side of LSU that was the old style of LSU, at least this season, where it was complacent, you got a nine-run lead, and then now things are starting to get tight, and it was almost like they were waiting for the other foot to drop, like, oh, we're up 9 nothing. now it's 9-6, and it's like, oh, it's a whole new ball game. We haven't really won many of these ball games, so yeah. how y'all were talking about it on Wednesday, which was, I need to seem to a team to see how to learn how to win. I think that was a massive step in the right direction, because as bad as it got, as close as it got, where it was... Nine nothing, nine six, and then you have Herring come in and he starts getting laced a little bit, and you're like, oh god! You see Gidry get up, Ackenhausen get up in the pen. Well, and no, I'm just saying, like it could have oh. gone that direction, and it didn't. They they put the fire out a little bit, and well, after the air yeah. by Braswell, then you pop up a bunt, then you have one get underneath uh, Bradley Neal behind the plate, and it's like all those little things that right. have happened throughout the year were showing up again, but they're able to withstand their own devices. That was the thing. So. It started to go, mm-hmm. and usually when you don't feel like you feel like when the brakes go the wrong way, it starts to go. It just falls off the cliff. Especially See, when it's been happening all but year. But it hasn't. But, but here's it the thing too. That's, this that this is what thing. people don't understand. Like this is a winning team, and I don't care how good your team is or how bad they are. You usually don't see teams go game to game or go in and out of games where they're putting up a run or two runs. No, or right. You have crooked innings. Innings, innings out of innings out of innings, bro. If that second, if that third and fourth inning don't happen, you get beat 6 nothing. Yeah. Absolutely. You get what I'm saying? So like they put it together when they need to when they needed to put it together when there was opportunities there and they held on. Yep. That's what winning teams do. Absolutely. I don't care how close it got. No doubt. That's what winning teams do. No doubt. So if they were on a situ if they were sitting here and they were 7 and 3 right now, You'd be sitting here like, oh, oh game. This, is, yeah, yeah, this is what we do. We win. You wouldn't even be thinking about it that right. way. But because the streak was there of four games in a row, because they hadn't won a series yet, you think, oh, man, we almost let that one slip yeah. away. I don't think we're that good. Right. No. This is what winning teams do. Right. How many times can you keep doing that, though? Yep. And you're perceived the way – perception is crazy, right? Perception is reality. People like to say, like, that is – you are what we perceive you to be. Yeah. And so – when you do that, you look at it differently. If you're winning, you look at it the way you just you spoke about it. Scored nine runs. I don't care how you scored, how how many innings it took you to get there. You scored it. You scored. The, you put the runs on the board. Now, team that you're playing is a top ten team, so they're gonna fight. You know, they're not just gonna give up. And so they score four, right? They scored two. You start to feel it teetering. Okay, hey, we don't look like we were sharp. Maybe we're a little content. A Maybe while. we kind of took the foot off the gas. Then all of a sudden, Griffin Herring locks it in and gets out the inning. What you knew, if you got out the inning, you didn't give up too much, it'd be fine. Shut down, shut down, shut down. Eighth inning, LSU, insurance run. Yeah. That's what they haven't been doing, right? Mississippi State, they almost blew the game, 9-0, nine, 9-8, nine, no insurance runs, right? Had they stopped them and scored a run in between there somewhere, it feels like, boom, here's the momentum, it's over. We, we, we crushed the only opportunity you had. As an old right. coach I had used to say, put their dicks in the dirt. That. And LSU has not done that, but they were able to kind they of were, it, put a little bit on the board. Because as you've said, like you're waiting for the clean inning after LSU scores, right? Where it's not a teeter-totter game of... And what they do. Exactly. And they were able to do that late in the game, but that's still that feeling of, man, you look at the scoreboard where it's four on the board, five on the board, zero, 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 zero. Like, okay. Like, at some point, when you play good teams and you play SEC teams, like all of these teams that you're going to face, they're not just going to lie down. Right. You have to continue to put pressure on, and you can't fall into the lulls that they have. But that could also come from a little bit of how the lineup is constructed, and you get a big hit from Pearson, you get a big hit from Bingham, and that's pretty much the difference in the game. Well, and you have – And yeah. your other guys performed. Like, the guys yeah. that you need to play well, played well. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you're singling out other people now because I look on the other side of it, and I look in the other dugout, and I think to myself – you're crazy if you think you're going to find another game with Austin, Cozio, and Esp- uh, Espinal. Last night, y'all know where they went last night? Top three hitters in our lineup? One for 14 with nine punches. Yep. Yeah. You're crazy if you think you're going to neutralize them the, like that the rest of the weekend. So it's how can we continue to outperform those guys? Whether it's from the top of our lineup 
which last night it did. It was from that spot, or whether it's throughout the lineup. But you're going to have to find ways to keep outperforming them, to keep beating them. You were able to neutralize them again last night, or last night for the first time. Can you continue to do it, and at what rate can you continue to do it? You know what I was shocked about last night is you had a righty throwing. We thought they were going to start Larson. Yep. And Kling was gonna was not gonna play. We were wrong, and we were wrong. And you know what? Good thing we were wrong. Yeah. Jay must have seen something. I've, uh, maybe he says, "You shows know what? You, that shows." Hey, you here's what the he confidence I have in you. Shows exactly. you what he thinks about him. I think that you're gonna be able to get out of it, and I think we need you on defense. We'll figure the other stuff out. Go play baseball. Hey, and to double. sidebar that too, like it's not just a I think. You got to understand everyone that's looking at it from the outside. And so if you see Paxton all of a sudden three games from now not have his best game, get off the get him out of here train. Because your coach just told you at the time where we need a win the absolute most, not yep. only because it's the next game, because this is very important for us going forward. We need this win. We're facing a righty who throws 100. Paxton, get your ass out there and play center field. Yep. Yep. I'm not taking you out. Go play center field. Yep. That should tell you a lot of what he thinks about. Right. So we were wrong. But I'm glad we are. Right. Glad. I like go ahead. Go oh, ahead. and I was gonna say another note from like the post game because, you know, nothing better than sitting in the car waiting for traffic to go. Just gives me give me and Twice. Papa Jay just Twice. get to have a little one on one. Scooting out there with two outs in the ninth. You sick individual if yeah, you do that. Just... That's right out. Oh, just a lot of got faith in the so, team. Got out so quickly that I went to Mike Anderson's for dinner with my father in law. Didn't get invited to that either. Well, it was me and my father in law. Yeah, he doesn't love a little sidecar, a little caddy. Yeah. Um, but Jay was talking at the post game. He said the most important at bat of the game was the 0 2 walk to Paxton Kling. Like when he gets down 0 2 and he's able to battle back. And he, I don't know if that's more for Kling psyche or just the no, fact but, that he didn't like seeing it and be like, all right, he's not out of the at bat because there's been a lot of times where you see, what do you say when you're struggling? It feels like it's 0 2 when you step in the box. That happened. Yep. And then you see Kling. And he doesn't not chase. Take, and that's what he would start to press. He would take bad swings at pitches that weren't close. And then you see him battle back, get to a 3 2 count, ultimately walk. And then also goes up the next time, gets a base hit. And yep. then he's shows off why he should be in the lineup by taking a single and do a double. Yep. And so, you know, that at bat obviously was a great thing for us to see, right? That's what you want to see. But in that at bat, and I don't know if this is called from – I don't know if, if the dugout's calling it if, or if Paxton's doing this on his own. I just can't wrap my head around why. Early in the season, I was like, oh, maybe he's just, you know, tracking. Him see it. But the more I watched it and the more I, like, paid attention to the situations he's doing it, he does it with one strike. That's like, not a, he got 1-0 oh. and then he squared – I mean, 0-1, oh, and he squared around and pulls back on a fastball. I'm like – now you're 0-2. Like, that did nothing for you. But maybe it did. Maybe that's why he walked. Maybe it locked him out. I don't know why, but it's not something that I just – I would love to just ask him. Just I've, not, I've, never, I've never loved the – unless you were – unless you – so, like, sitting here as a lefty, and it doesn't really matter if you're a lefty or a righty, but if you're going to bunt 0-1, oh, you know for a fact that you're putting it down. Yeah. You know for a fact that you don't have to be perfect with it, and you know for a fact this has to be a fair ball. I can't put this down in foul territory and come back here 0-2. Or pull back and come back here 0-2. Right. right. You knew for a fact that, like, for whatever reason, the third baseman's way back. For whatever reason, the second baseman, first baseman ain't even playing me in anywhere near where they can make a play. I know I'm going to put it down. I know I'm going to put it down on the right spot. And I know it's going to be fair. And I don't have to be perfect with it. You're almost stealing a hit at those points. So, for me, when you're going to square 0-1 and then pull back, what did that get you? That's, that's what I was What did that it. get you? I didn't get it. But okay. he didn't do it after that. Because right? you would even have to make, yeah, yeah I, didn't, I don't think I saw it again, but you would even have to make a case of, like you, like you said, you have to get it down, but it would be like, obviously he had. Element of surprise, too. He didn't, <laughs> not showing. But that. if he did it oh oh, you'd see like, he's too good of a, like, he's shown you enough, like, I guess he's a hell of a practice player to be able to get back into the lineup, because he must have done something or figured something out to be like, all right, cling, you're back in, or is one more vote of confidence from Jay, like, one more time, let's go for it. But... <laughs> With that, like with the bunt thing, Imagine is Lloyd is a Imagine Lloyd is a manager. Yeah, he awful. Coming, Lloyd, <laughs> Why? Lloyd, Lloyd would quit a, quit a third of the season in. Like I'm over. Lloyd, Lloyd would lose every strand of hair on his head. He would be one games at seven. Out his right. eyes would be Lloyd, out of his face. Lloyd pulls up at seven oh five. What happened? Well, the game started at seven. Oh, well, I thought that you know seven oh five would have been fine. Oh, I sent y'all. I sent y'all the the, the the lineup through text. Y'all didn't get yeah, it. Yeah, check the group me. Yeah, they got to right. play the anthem anyway. Seven oh seven first pitch. We'll be ready. Shoes are tied. Um, 
But with, and I wanted to know if y'all have even looked at this because I have. You talked about like third and first base. Are they just so far back that he's like, with my speed, I can get one down? But I've never even seen him get a bunt down in that. He state. hasn't attempted. Yeah, like attempt. He pulls to it put back. It down. That's the point, dude. Like where you're yeah. saying it, and I'm thinking to myself. <laughs> I wish I could tell you I did look at it, but it doesn't matter because he he's just pulling pulls it back. back every time. It's not even a, like let me track it all the way. It's like back. I, I'm just, I'm just curious. And look, if Is you get a David me, Eckstein it and just I slap hit it, I could care less if he does it. Just. Hey, let's not put ourselves in well, these spots right here. Yeah, and like, look, here's a can, free one. I don't care. You can do anything you want to do on the field, and it can look any way it wants to look. But when I ask, or if I see it, I want to know the explanation. Like, no, the explanation, if there's a reason, no, no, no. the explanation has to make sense too. Right, but if like, there's, don't yeah. just give me an explanation that makes right. absolutely no sense. If there's a reason you're doing this because it's going to do something else for you, and there's an act and a legitimate reason, I'm cool with it. I don't care what it looks like. If yeah. that's what works, that's, if, if I said, hey, I'm taking O2 every time because. I'm working on this. You're not gonna do this in yeah. a real game, but okay, I can see the benefit of that. Or, or if you're, or if you're sitting up there and you're telling me, hey, there's a runner on second right right now with no outs, and then the first pitch as a righty, you're over here taking hats and you're looking in the third base dugout, and you're like, yeah, I'm just trying to move them over. You're not. It's very obvious you're not trying to move right. them over. It's very obvious you're not trying to see this ball deep. It's very obvious you're not trying to use the other side of the field or the big part of the field. Right. You're lying. Right. Like, right. give me an explanation that yeah. makes sense as to right. what you're trying to do. So, look, if there and there may be one, and he may say it, and I'm like, okay, that makes okay, – I can see that. I understand it. Didn't even think so of it So, what would be one that would make sense for you in that situation? Uh, to yeah. me, and honestly, I don't know. Okay, that's what I'm saying. I don't know either. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. know one either. I don't know. Maybe there's something new that hey, I don't know. Respectfully, I don't know one either in that situation. Know. That's all I'm saying. Um, I hope but it's not like a – He ended up walking. Mental thing. I mean, I don't think so, because he, he hadn't done it. So maybe he's done with it because he had the double. But he ended up walking next to the bat, ended up striking out. Then he then he hit the double, Yeah, which was great, right? Um, on another note, Bear Jones, the ball hit the middle when the center fielder whiffed it, and he got a triple or he got the third. It's just in Because he's – no, he, run, he runs well. Yeah. Like, he's running around the bases. I'm like, Dan, look at the big man go. Like, long strides, smooth strides for a big dude. That's pretty impressive. He's an athlete, that. man. You know, yeah. the kids come from a family of athletes. He's an athlete. Yeah, it was it was impressive. I hope um, Kelly wasn't watching. Yeah, well, That's a, he's also going to put him on a, a – uh, we're going to go with a strong diet to get him back to the weight that he needs to be at to yeah. play in that arena. Yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> now, moving on to today's game, they're facing Bryce Cunningham. That is their ace. He's got a 2.87 ERA, 57 strikeouts, and 37 innings. Ooh. He's going to throw. He's a righty. I'd imagine Paxton's going to be back in the lineup again. How many walks? I'd imagine it's going to – Huh? You have any, how many walks? For who? Bryce Cunningham. Cunningham. Oh, I uh, do not know, actually. I got you over here. Conversations, and we've heard people talk about, oh, my God, it looks like they're so patient. Doesn't seem like from the stats that you just gave that this is one you can be very patient with. It's going to strike you out. He has an out pitch. How many walks? Because that's going to give me an idea of what are, what are we getting in terms of a strike thrower or we got somebody who's literally just a thrower? I'm looking. I was trying to look at the – 15. The, 15 walks. And So pretty, you know. He's, good. He's, yeah, he's good. Not, he's gonna he's a good ratio. He's going to throw strikes to be around the zone. So you're going to have a guy that you have significant challenge. I would imagine the lineup's going to be the same. <clears throat> yeah. Would why would you change? I mean, I, I don't know if this come out, but like, why would you change the lineup if it's the same type of pitcher yeah. on the mound? I would imagine. Right? So I like that, too. You came off a good game, right? You played well. You made the things. You won the game. Now we're going to – let's run it back. Same guy, same team. Get comfortable doing this. Let's do it again. Yeah. Right, so you have a challenge now. You have Gage Jump, who's going to go out there, and uh, you know he's been throwing well. He's been a little bit inconsistent at times, but he's got good stuff. Strikes a bunch of guys out. Um, I would like to see him go out there and not walk. I like to guys. see him get deeper. Into yeah, the game. right. And I think that I think the deeper coincides. he can get, yeah, it does. It really does. Because the deeper he can get, means the more strikes he's throwing, which probably means the less amount of pitches that he's throwing early in the game. If he's someone that can start getting deeper into ball games. He's going to help this bullpen out and this pitching staff out a ton. Yep. Um, An absolute ton. One walk last night. Yeah. He was around the zone. He was throwing well. That's what you want to see him today. Make them beat you, right? Because this offense is a scary offense. Lloyd. Yes. Never mind, because I could find it. I just want to know, like, how many strikeouts did LSU have last night as a team hitting? Uh, Not many. I would imagine. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, strike out, strike out, strike out, strike out. Seven. Seven. Seven and five walks. So that's not again. Seven, seven's not bad at all. No, not at all. Not at all. 
You know, seven's good. You know, it's like good. You want to strike out like as for like, a team? Yeah, it's but good. seven for a team you're playing on nine innings, like and, you know, and you have five walks, dude. It's good. Yeah, yeah. And so I want to see pitching. I want to see Gage jump go at the guys the same way um, Holman did, right? I also want to see him limit his walks because here's the deal: Vanderbilt doesn't. They have some guys hitting over 300. I think six guys in the lineup hitting over 300, but they don't have a bunch of firepower. It doesn't seem like they scare you. Although the nine, the eight hole hitter last night hit the three run home run that you know felt like shouldn't have gone out, but went out. Um, and so you just never know where you come from. But consistently, they haven't done enough to feel like okay, if I throw the ball over the plate, they're gonna be hitting balls all over the ballpark, over the fence, the whole deal. So force them to force them to prove to you that they can hit. Don't walk guys. Don't give them extra bait. Don't don't put them in advantageous accounts. Get ahead of them. Go ahead, make them hit. I don't think that if you do that, I don't think the Vanderbilt's going to score no, enough runs. Yeah. Um, um, and I think by doing that, you're not you're, the pitcher's going to be a little bit more dominant. Now offensively, I think you do the same thing you did last game, like you said. But I think once you start scoring runs. You've got to continue to have those at bats. For two or three innings, they kind of went a little bit, uh, I don't say silent, but more complacent. Yeah. Um, and look, that's the other guy on the mound, too, trying to get guys out. So that's what I think. That, those are the keys for me. What about you? With, the, with an arm on the mound like the one they have right now, it's not a let me make it, let me make myself anxious and not really understand, I guess you could say, the moment, but you really have to be super selective. You really have to be super stubborn, and you have to really, 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 really be really bought into the plan that you go up to the plate with. The guy's got good stuff that's a starter tonight. You're not going to sit up there and be able to get mistake after mistake after mistake. He may give you one, and when you get that one, you have to be able to execute on that one. And you can't go up there chasing his best stuff on the corners of the plate because I promise you if you do, he will pitch into the yep. seventh and or later, and he will have 10-plus strikeouts. Yep, He's got that kind of stuff. So you have to go in there and be able to execute an offensive plan. And Jay being an offensive guy and an offensive mastermind, I would imagine he's putting huge emphasis on guys being able to execute what they're trying to do today. This guy not having a bunch of walks, having good stuff, I think the aggressive aggressive approach is, is another way to go. Same way they did it last year. Because this guy's going to be in the zone. Yep. Go out there and show them that, hey, you're going to go and you're going to swing it and you're going to start driving balls everywhere you want to drive them and do things you need to do. So to me, that's the biggest thing. Uh, next, this is the biggest game of the year. 100%. Biggest game of the year. Last year was the biggest game hey, of the year. Hey, you now have an opportunity. You got an opportunity right now to go get your first conference series win. Listen, nobody around the country, nobody, thought that LSU, no. Let me tell you what. If you win today, you could you, have, you you put yourself in a position to do something that nobody ever, we didn't think it. No, no, no. Nobody no. ever thought it. Nobody thought in the country that they'd be going into game three of this series right. with a chance to sweep. That's my like, point. Not even sweep. That's my nobody point. Nobody thought they'd be going into game, like, you, like, we didn't think you'd see this. They win the series. It ain't going to be 1-2 and then lose on Sunday. Right. They win the series. It might be 1, so, maybe win the back 2, however it go. My point is what you're saying. You have a, you have a chance to do something that is very unexpected, right, and that, put, that could change the whole dynamic of your season. Yeah. So this is the most important game. And the guy on the mound, you need to see pitch better. So there's just a lot. It's 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 another. I would even say pitch better. He needs to take that next step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He needs, yeah. He needs to take yeah. the next step. We've seen him pitch well. We've seen him pitch well for a couple innings. We've never really seen him like just, I guess, just implode and really give up a game. Right. But we need to see him get past that. Yeah, right. That's that little that's threshold. Way to say it. Get to the next spot. Yep. Um, so when you talk about, I this... think they match up well with him too. Okay. When you talk oh, about ahead. the series, <laughs> okay. do you think that you can even put yourself in a position? Two sweep or does it? Yes. Or yeah. would you say because I'm just looking at how they handled Arkansas, and where you tried to put yourself in a position today, two of three, you kind of did the opposite by going. Obviously, game one was massive. You have to throw home and you have to get a win. And whenever you talk about how they knocked out, like essentially eliminated their three best hitters, that's not something that's going to happen. I would imagine over a three game set. But when you look at LSU and how they pitched last night, going Holman. And then Herring, and now, okay, that's so as Jay would say, those were his two best arms are spent. But yeah. how many did he use last night? Two. Just two. Okay. Just two. Right, that's what I, so that's where I'm getting to. I, I would imagine, from what we've seen, it's been Gage Jump, Ackenhausen. Those two together, you're kind of seeing a formula there of the guy that, first of all, he trusts. And I do, I think you're all right. It's contingent on Jump being able to get past the fourth inning, into the fifth, 
maybe potentially you, into the six. Yeah, yeah right. that would be outstanding. That's like what that's that next step that you're looking for. Yeah. But then you have to fast forward to the third yeah. game. We don't we can't worry about that right now. But you can't third, right. you can't worry about it. I'm just so saying like, we talk sweet like that. No, 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 no we're not saying you win this that's game. That's why I put said yourself Yeah, we're not sitting here that's that's how these things go and I think that's how a lot of people get in trouble whether they preach it or not is you don't actually go out and practice it in the sense of last night was paramount to get last night's win and you did everything you had to do to get last night's win you were in a good enough spot and you played well enough that you only used two arms to do it yeah. that is almost the perfect scenario right yeah, so right. the perfect scenario is you use only one so you go into tonight and it's the same thing but if gage jump is able to do what you and i all three of us were just talking about there's a chance that you may only use two maybe a third arm tonight so then when you go into that last game, yeah, it may be all arms on deck and we don't know who's starting and how long they'll go, but it gives you a better chance because you got that many more fresh guys. Yeah. 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 And um, now I'm starting to see why this is the most important game of the year. Because you got Gage Jump, Ackenhausen, you're, two, you're probably third and fourth best arms, right. however you want to put it, and then it falls on you go People from the elation of winning game one to you just lost two more in a row in yeah. SEC play yeah. and now you're staring down another midweek game. Right. Right, and so it's just it's a, it's a really big game, especially because they played well, and especially because all the other things we said. And so, you know, I think they, they match up very well at Vanderbilt. I think they have, you know, Vanderbilt is more of a pitching team, not as much of an offensive team or a scary offensive team. And I think LSU, you know, don't, they don't the offensively they don't need to put a lot of pressure to score a ton of runs, but I think it also allows our pitching staff to pitch against a team that they feel like they can get back on track. We said yeah. that before the series. If it looked good yesterday. Obviously, they had some things, but defensively make the plays and so you move on to game two I think you're going to see them be even better in game two than they were in game one uh, with some of those little things that we had talked about and and just to if you if so we can do it because we, we're not putting the uniform on but if we're going to sit here and talk sweep and we want to talk sweep you get it done tonight with let's say jump Ackenhausen and maybe one other one. Gidry Gidry those three you're telling me right now that you couldn't see a world where whoever starts on Saturday goes out and gives you three and a third, and then you pull in Thatcher right after that, and he gives you three clean innings, and now you're into the sixth, into the seventh with the chance to win? That That's that's realistic. And that's, Absolutely. That's what, I, that's, Absolutely. What, and that's what I mean. So it's like that's where you put yourself if you're able to go out there and take another step forward tonight because, because that's where you can be. And I would say that you should almost even have a little bit of confidence in it because of what you saw against Arkansas when you went – with kind of a matchup based scheme and you were able to put almost a winning game plan together yep. against the best pitcher in the country. Yep. And you had guys that could hold their own yeah. in the bullpen where you're like three innings here, two innings there, three innings here. Like oh, you have is, guys. At the end of the day, every, this game is, is most important. The well, game at a time, all stuff. At the end of the day, it this really is, is a, Hey, a nut up, you know, shit Prove it. off the pot type weekend. Prove hey, me yesterday. Show what a fluke. Me, like sh nut up and show me how good you really are. Like it's time to say, okay, we're good. We're talented. Everybody's saying all this stuff. All right, show me. And if you and if you're not, then that's okay. That's the reality of our season. And so, you know, I think that's what this series is, and I think you're seeing that. So I think you're going to see them get better and better and better. And, and honestly, if I'm going to be honest, here, my only one, the only one thing that scares me about tonight for them, if you will, is let's be honest. This isn't a this is a Friday night game. This is game two of this series. But this is their first time facing a righty that's got front line stuff. And has put up frontline numbers on the year so far. And this is a right-handed loaded squad as well. So it's like, all right, can they go out there and show and do what they did yesterday against this kind of guy? Yep. Um, you know, and to me that's just, you know, the not the free swinging, but like being that's controlled why I said, aggression. You gotta really sure, yeah. you well, gotta really in. execute a plan tonight. But, what, but if they are able to do it, that will show you once again. They've taken another yeah, that's, step forward. That's another mar marker. They've taken you know another I mean? step forward. Um, I think that's what you saw, and Jay highlighted it again with the Tommy White hit up the middle, where he's like, he's not trying. He wasn't trying to do too much. And I think a lot of from what you saw from your big boppers, from a Travinsky, from Tommy, from Bear Jones, it was they were trying to hit you an eight-run home run. Whenever right. it's like you can just get base hits, like it doesn't have to go at the ballpark every time you swing at it. So if they're able to have that kind of controlled approach at the plate, where you don't have to try to leave the yard every time. It can be, hey, hit it the other way. And you've seen Bear Jones be able to do that kind of more than anyone. Obviously right. Tommy. But like that kind of swing where it's, okay, I'll let the pitch get deep. I'm not trying to just hunt one pitch. It's a, it's more of an approach to hitting as opposed to just for swinging. No yeah. doubt. Yeah, I'd, I'd imagine someone like Bear, it's 
probably so fun and oh. probably something you always want to do because of your ability to do it and how far you can hit it is to see let me let me let this thing launch right but the better he is at literally honing in and and locking into letting the baseball travel and using the big part of the field because he has so much power and ability yeah that's when you really start to unlock something not let me do it maybe two swings a game or one at bat a game but nobody on if you're right. able to do it pitch in and pitch out that's when right. you'll really start seeing him go right and this is my last point before we move on because it's my mom's well i'm gonna talk that's part of my current call but i gotta go to lafayette tonight for a, a big party Oh, yeah. Big party very boy. very uh, good occasion. Um, so we're gonna get to the segues after this, but I want to wrap up this conversation with you. To your point, Jay came out in, the, in an article after the game yesterday and said usually he's used to coaching hitter, like really good hitters, and allowing their power to develop later as they get stronger. That's the normal trajectory it's the normal of progression hitting, of how I use right? happen. Yeah. yeah, like hey, you're a good hitter now. The power is going to develop later. He then said, this team is full of great power, and they have yet to be the, to develop into those great hitters, right? They have the capability and all the talent in the world. And so to your point, what you want to see is that, hey, you, we know you, we can get into it. Let's get, take that next step as a hitter and say, okay, now we're going to, we're going to understand what we're trying to do, get, understand how to get to where we want to get, and be more consistent. And so I think that's a really good point, and I think that – that's going to be something to look for, look at moving forward. That has been the best way to put how this lineup has performed, really. And yeah. That's something that has awareness of what his lineup is. Like the exact quote is, we have guys that have power that aren't necessarily good hitters, but they can be when they do things right. And they were great. Then they were great hitters tonight. Right. Like that, and that's what that's where you get into like the ancillary parts of the lineup too. And you have a guy that's going to come in and be an ace for Vanderbilt. Like that's the part where you have to look at Pearson, Neal. Roswell was the only one that didn't get a hit last night. Pierce is the one started the whole thing. Right. And you so know? it's those guys that, like, yep. you need to be able to contribute in some form or hey. fashion to be able to get your offense going. What did, what did we say on Wednesday? If we're going to – we're crazy if we're going to sit here and think that this team is going to go off the back of just Tommy, of just Travinsky, and of just Jones. Right. Those other guys are going to start having to have make a presence, like make an announcement that I'm here as well. Yep. And that's how it was going to have to go. And that's how this team's going to have to play. But we no talked doubt. about it. We knew that this was the type of team that was probably going to come on in the second half of the year. So if you ask me, the two or three losses that they only had up until conference play, you're lucky to have gone, gotten away with that. Like, yeah. I'm surprised they didn't. They weren't sitting here kind of with, not maybe as extreme, but like some, something closer to what Florida did this year, right? Florida had 10 losses before they got to conference play. Yeah. Something closer to that. So Where'd they end up? What do you mean, where'd they end up? That's what I'm saying. Well, there's three in the country right now. No, where did they end up? I'm last talking year. about this year. I'm talking about. He's talking year. about this year. Oh yeah, Florida dropped a bunch of midweek games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought Before they got year. to conference yeah. play, that's what I'm saying. So that, that's my point. My point is, I'm surprised LSU wasn't somewhere closer to that arena with the four, five, six lost team coming into right. conference play as opposed to the two or three losses that right. they had. So, so the yep. better half of them is yeah. to come. Yep, for sure. Uh, it's gonna be a good game. Do all the little things. Do everything we said, um, and. You put yourself in a position. I just want to see a little bit of a next step. Hey, did this? Okay, let's do that. But now let's do something. Do it a little bit better, and just uh, continue to move forward. Right. Piece together. First, first game I've seen. We've seen progress since first first game. We've seen something different. It felt like in a few games. So, I don't think you'll get the, the Vandy two area game again. No, no. But take advantage. Right. Um, okay. Six left on base. So we have how much? Six. Yep. That's not bad. That's how you win. Um, let's get to the seggies. You have a mistake of the day. I do have a mistake. Brought of the day. to you by Lloyd and Does. the place. Yep. Um, mistake of the day just came in through the wire. Rebecca was driving in. We were driving to New Orleans because they have a wedding, and a my mom put together like some tour of eating that we're doing in New Orleans. I'm doing Ooh, both. I bet you that's gonna be awesome. Oh, it's gonna be fire. But uh, Rebecca's got a wreck, so I have to figure that whole thing out. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So like bad? I don't know. Like on the she interstate? Me like five times. Like on the interstate? I don't know. Oh, dude, well, you should have told me we would have shut down early. Okay. Let's take a day. Roger Bud does. You have a curtain call? My curtain call will go to everyone who got to experience the uh, the Travis Scott um, cameo oh, yeah. last night in town in Baton Rouge. That's not a normal thing. Travis Scott performed at Fred's last night. It looked fine. It looked awesome. Was it, was it last night or was it the night before? It doesn't it really matter. It was the night before, I think. Yeah, doesn't really Thursday matter. Night. Whatever one no, yeah, it was last night. Whatever one it was. Um, Wednesday. It was Wednesday night. I wish Wednesday. I would have known that that was happening. I probably would have slid in there, too. So. 
everybody who got the big part Jack. of that, hey, that's dope. That's fun. Michael Idiot. Rubin. That's Why fine. does everybody take their phone out? What do you mean? Thing. You don't that's want the experience. You, you tape the moment. These yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's crazy because I watched what the video. Some of them were like, but they have people there that are going to film it, put it out, be like, I was in yeah, that Now they want to put theirs out. And, but it's, yeah, you can't great. see shit. It looked awesome. looked awesome. Love that he did that. Loved it. He is an entertainer. Oh, for the students. Oh, no doubt. That's why he's the best. Yeah. Curry calls are brought to you by our friends at uh, Shared Partners. And? Me. Uh, Lloyd, you got one? Or no? You don't have to have one. Don't have one. Okay. Uh, my current call, reason why we're... Oh, I do have a current call. Right, okay. <laughs> you can just wait. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, let me hop in here real quick. My show. My time. My segment. <laughs> Curtain call goes to... Oh, Jaden Daniels pulled up to the University uh-huh. of Texas and absolutely flexed all over UT and all of their students where he was basically trolling them the entire time. He made anybody that wanted a picture throw up the L, and they're like, man, I can't do that. He's like, you don't get a picture. And he's like, where's the star power at in this place? Like, you come to LSU, it's a little different. So him going to Texas, I don't know why he was there, but to absolutely just drop sack and yep. show Texas, that. like, LSU yep. is probably the place to be. Place to be. Um, my current call. I am going to Lafayette tonight for a party, like I had mentioned. Uh, it's my beautiful mom's 60th birthday. Hey, she turned 60 happy yesterday. Happy birthday. So we are having a uh, nice big party for her uh, in Lafayette. And That's so right. I have to hurry up and get my stuff and head to Lafayette. So Kurt calls to my mom and uh, 60 years young and a lot of life left to live. Yes, so indeed. that is it. Uh, we appreciate the love and support. We appreciate you tuning in. We will be back live on Monday from 6 to 8 p.m. recapping, hopefully. LSU won. Uh, they play tonight at 7 on SEC Network. Hopefully you are there. I will not be there, but I'll be watching on TV. Um, if you like watching us, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It really does help. And uh, if you can't watch, like listening to us or anywhere you get your pods. Again, enjoy your weekend. Uh, beautiful weather is supposed to be this weekend. And we'll see you on Monday in studio 6 8 p.m. Love you. Have a good night. Keep talking. Peace. More wins, I hope.